I like things that are sort of in between states and that are a little bit uncomfortable. I first saw glass blowing in the early 90s and I immediately knew that I really wanted to do that. I was told that I couldn't just have a go at it, but I would have to dedicate my life to it. I moved to Adelaide to become a trainee at the jam factory, and I created a menagerie of objects, this ever-evolving group of characters. So I'm really interested in combining human, plant and animal characteristics. One of my favourite images is that picture of the cat in the hat when it, he is balancing all of these very precarious objects. So those constructions which look like they shouldn't stand up, it's like defying gravity is really, really exciting. And it is sort of unnerving to audiences to see quite spindly constructions, especially made of glass. Well, I got both the perfume bottles as gifts for a birthday. This perfume bottle, the yellow one, I came home from work one day to discover that the stopper that sat in it had obviously been broken. I broke the stopper from this. And then, just to finish everything off, I had a very tall, beautiful red piece of glass that I used to threaten everybody if they ever touched it. And guess who broke it? I have repaired other perfume bottles before. I certainly have never heated up somebody's treasured perfume bottle and messed around with it. When I got put together with Tom, I just thought, this is magic and I genuinely wouldn't have cared what he made with it. When she visited us, we'd been strawberry picking the day before, and so we just happened to have way too many strawberries, and I made strawberry shortcake. And the dog was hanging around. And I loved his dog, because I love dogs. And so I said, why don't we turn it into a dog? I would never have thought of putting a strawberry on the dog's nose. I just love that. I didn't have to make it exactly as it had been, although that would have been much easier. <laughs> I don't think anyone would design this if they didn't have the constraints of the project. These objects did have a different life. These are handmade objects, but they're sort of semi-mass produced. Unless the human story is there of the person who really values those objects, it's not worth the resources of fixing them. But because there is that human story, and also we're talking about the history of craft and what it means to fix something in the 21st century, and to use ancient skills to give something another life, which is totally relevant in the current climate, then I'd say the project is worth doing and it's worth thinking about and looking at. But the object itself, has, you know, its sort of own questions, you know, it's sort of an awkward thing.